Hey, hello and welcome. Welcome to JP's product pick of the week. It's me, JP, and here we are ready for another product pick of the week. At least I know I am. Are you ready? Let's do it. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is send you somewhere else. Go to this product page because if you head to product page 4867, you are not only going to get to watch this show inside a product page, but you can get 40% off on today's product. So head here. In fact, I'll show you. There it is. Go to that URL right there. I'm going to refresh my browser and watch the price magically drop from 58 95 to 35 37 unheard of. Uh, so that is, let me get this out of the way for you. That is where you want to go. You want to head to this product page. Uh, it is, I'm going to throw my glasses here. What did I say? Product ID 4867. If you didn't know that with Adafruit, if you know the product ID, you can get there. It's just adafruit.com uh, slash product slash and then the product ID. So head here or point your camera to that QR code right there and you're going to get yourself 40% off on today's product. You can watch the show inside of the page. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is have Lady Adas tell us a little bit about this product. So take it away, wouldn't you, Lady Ada? Okay, so we've got a um, new air quality sensor, and this one is kind of interesting because a lot of CO2 sensors you see, like the SGP30, they're not true CO2 sensors. They're not actually measuring the CO2 in the air. They're kind of approximating it based on um, you know, volatile organic gases that they're measuring and then they sort of do some math and they sort of do analysis and they're like, okay, this is what we think the CO2 is and we're pretty close. Um, but uh, this is a, a true NDIR sensor. So this is, this is a sensor that uses, uh, you know, I link to the Wikipedia and I don't say completely forgot everything about it, but um, it uses infrared light to detect how much CO2 is actually in the air, like parts per million. Um, so this is what they use when like, you know, you want to actually measure atmospheric carbon dioxide or you want to measure actual airflow in a building or you want to, you know, you're, you're measuring CO2 in a greenhouse or you're measuring uh, emissions from, um, you know, machinery and you want to measure how much CO2 is coming out of them. Um, this is the device. So this is from Sensurion and they make great sensors. Um, the sensor that they make is like this kind of chunky module you see in the middle, the green thing. Um, there's actually a little microcontroller and also an SHT31 humidity and temperature sensor. So you actually get CO2 plus temperature plus humidity all over I squared C. And the data kind of pops out over one I squared C port. Um, and uh, we have code in Arduino and Circuit Python and Python. Um, it's very easy to use. Uh, you just, you basically, every two seconds or so, you get a new piece of data. You can um, change how often that data gets emitted, like from two seconds to an hour, but you're not going to get data more than every two seconds. And you can even see that glowing light, that that's it performing um, the, the sensing in the cavity inside of this plastic body. So it's a really cool sensor. Um, they're not as inexpensive as a, a basic air quality sensor because it's again doing true co2 sensing but again there's nothing i mean it's 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 60 bucks but there's n nothing less expensive that does the real thing and like i said this is the real thing this is true co2 sensing so um right now it's measuring indoors about 800 uh ppm that's not uh, unusual uh it's winter we have things are are closed and not a lot of uh air um, circulation happening here um if i breathe near it you will see uh, the CO2 rise. Um, the little video we have, it, it's a compressed can of air, right? Which is of course um, going to have a lot of uh, CO2 in it. But you can see even like me breathing, it does increase the, the CO2 in this area. And you can see the, the glowing um, IR uh, uh, sensing element at the end there that from the, the air that's kind of flowing in, it measures it. Um, and then sends the reading out over I squared C. So we just soldered it onto uh, a breakout board for you to make it really easy to use. Um, it's got level shifting and um, a regulator, so it can be used with five volt or three volt, you know, Raspberry Pi or Arduino Uno or anything in between. Um, but for people who want to do environmental sensing, environmental science, earth science, emissions, air quality, like 
this is really the sensor you want. I actually haven't been able to find any other sensor that's under a couple hundred dollars that does this uh, so easily. So uh, good on Sensorion for making a great quality sensor for an affordable price. All right, well, that sure convinces me that I need to check this out. Let me head right back there to my mystery cabinet of wonder drawers. And uh, let me grab one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Things happen. Uh, so this is my product pick of the week. It is the SCD30 CO2 sensor in STEMI QT format. And you can see here, I've got it connected up to a little uh, Pi Portal pint. This is the little Pi Portal, tiny little Pi Portal pint. Uh, I've connected it over a Stemma to Stemma QT cable, so I can use the I squared C on that. And then I've just mounted a couple little screws on there so I can hold that sort of sort of in place. Oh, let me try that again. Uh, the holes don't exactly line up, but if I leave one of those screws loose, we get it, get it on there pretty good. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, show you a little demo of it. So let's drop down to the overhead, little down shooter camera here. And what I'm going to do is plug this in. I've got a little circuit Python code running on here that pulls the sensor and then displays it on screen every uh, couple seconds. Uh, it, it grabs a new bit of data. And there you can see there's my CO2 parts per million. So I've got a, this is, the workshop is, is pretty well ventilated. I don't even have any extra fans or anything running right now, but I keep it pretty well ventilated. And I've also got uh, the door open a little bit to the workshop. So we're getting pretty good airflow. So this is a nice, healthy CO2 level. Uh, you are generally looking at anything under a thousand parts per million in the area that you're breathing. That's great. That's where you want to be. 1,000 to 2,000 is not terrific. You should try to improve it. Between 2,000 and 5,000, I believe it is, you probably have a problem that needs to be investigated. And over 5,000, this is uh, uh, possibly dangerous. Get out of there and, and clean up your air. Um, so you can see as, uh, th this is really, I think one of the best demos is breathe on it, right? Because we breathe in oxygen and uh, we breathe out a whole bunch of carbon dioxide. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, lean down and breathe on this. And what you'll see is there's uh, a couple things going on with this. First of all, the sensor looks like a little Lego minifig to me. See his little torso and legs there? No arms, but what do you wanna do? And a cute little helmet with a glowing eye. Uh, so that LED lets us know when it is running its calculation on the incoming air. Air comes into these little ports on the side. You see these like kind of little silver ports. That's, I believe, where the air comes in. Uh, and I don't know what uh, these little leg bits are for, honestly. Um, could be a flow thing, who knows. The, uh, so, so any air in that area is being sensed, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna breathe on it kind of deliberately right there. So um, in fact, I can pull this off of here and you can watch those um, you can watch those numbers there as I, as I breathe into this. So there you can see I have significantly increased the amount of carbon dioxide in that area uh, and it's gonna probably settle down here. And then since we have pretty good airflow, it should start clearing that out. So I'll, I'll set this down and leave it alone. Uh, you should see that just as air flows kind of in its natural way, that it's, it's uh, reducing the, the amount of CO2 there. If I go and fan it, right? If I, if I just move my hands a little bit and, and fan some air, I'm bringing the more moderate uh, levels of CO2, reduced uh, levels into, into that area. And you'll see it probably drop a little quicker. Um, and, uh, what I wanted to do is show you the, uh, a couple of things about, so we mentioned the product page. I'm going to jump back here for a second to my browser. So there's the product page. And if you scroll down, you'll get to some of the, um, 
specifications. Uh, by the way, this also does include a humidity and temperature sensor. I think it's the, I forget which one is on here. It's one of the ones that we have as a separate breakout, but it's, it includes a little humidity and temperature sensor, which might be useful depending on what you're trying to monitor. Uh, if we want to know more about it, click on the technical details or the guide. They'll take you kind of the same place. So here's the guide. It gives you uh, info about the sensor and yes, the SHT31 temperature and humidity sensor is, is the additional sensor that's built onto there as well as this NDIR CO2 sensor. If you click on the little downloads link, you can check out the data sheet from Sensirion and that will tell you about the accuracy, the range. It can measure from 400 parts per million all the way up to 10,000 parts per million. Um, the rate at which it can do the calculation, it's about every uh, one measurement every two seconds. So that's uh, something that the sensor itself will let you know. It, um, it has, you can, you can ask it, are you ready to give me new data? So you don't have to check it constantly. You just wait for it to return the yes, I've got uh, new data for you to check out. And um, then if you wanna see the CircuitPython library in action, and you know what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring the, uh, sensor back into view there so we can see, yeah, we're still at a pretty nice and healthy uh, below 1,000 parts per million. So here I've got uh, the circuit Python code that I'm running. What's going on here? I'm importing a bunch of libraries, including the board and bus IO so that I can get pinouts uh, for using I squared C. We also have some stuff that I'm using with display IO text, display text and layout so that we can use the display on this pipe portal pint. And then we import the Adafruit SCD30 library and that contains all that we need really to interface with the sensor. We then set up our I squared C bus and we set up the sensor on I squared C. And then a lot of this here, I'm gonna scrub down because that's all about just setting up the display to give us this info. Uh, and then here is what I was talking about during the main loop of the program, we check this if SCD data available. So we wait for the, the board to tell us, yes, I've got some data. Then we'll do the following. We'll print a bunch of things. I'll show you that in a second. But the key uh, here is that I am taking this SCD CO2 reading. That's the carbon dioxide reading. And I'm turning that number into a string just so I can display it easily. And then I change my label on the screen to show that text. So if I open up my uh, serial monitor here, you can see this is the data we get every two seconds, tells us that we have this 740-ish parts per million of CO2. Temperature is at about 28 degrees centigrade in here and humidity is about 30%. Uh, so that's it, that's all it takes to, to query it. If you look at my print statements here, you can see I can just ask for the sensor's temperature, the sensor's relative humidity and the sensor's CO2. We also have in the guide some information about calibration and some other more advanced settings. But in its simplest state, all you gotta do is ask the sensor, hey, what's the CO2 level? You get it returned to you in parts per million, nothing to convert. It's in the units that we care about. Uh, so another thing I thought would be kind of interesting here is, let me go to just pure uh, down shooter camera here. I guess I can stay up there. And I was kind of curious, let me, let me move my camera a little bit. I was kind of curious what would happen if I take this sensor and I dangle it into a jar in which I've got a bunch of sparkling water. Because my guess is this is sparkling water that is uh, giving off a bunch of CO2. It's probably still water that was charged full of CO2 right before it got thrown in the can there. That's my guess. Uh, ingredients, carbonated water. So not a lot of mineral content unless they've added some, but I don't think they have. So I think this is pretty much CO2 and water. So what I'm gonna do is pour some into this jar here and then dangle my sensor into there and I'll even put this cap on. And I'm not doing a great experiment here because we didn't do a control beforehand. Uh, but you can see there, I, I, can, uh, I can tell that we're getting way, way high levels. Actually, I thought, this, I thought this was outside of the range of what the sensor did. So yeah, a lot of CO2 inside of there, right? That's just tons and tons of CO2 gas inside of there. If I open it up, let's see, uh, does it dissipate quickly? Is there enough airflow? Maybe I'll wave my hands around a little bit. Uh, we may have all just also just hit a limit on it where it's, it, it, I, I doubt that it's going any higher than that, uh, regardless of what the, what the um, 
quality of that air is. All right, let me take let me take it out of there for a second. Let's see, have I have I simply confused it? Let's give it a couple seconds. Uh, I can, yeah, okay, you can see it coming down. So whatever that is, it's outside of what we can measure, I think. Um, so it's probably, this sensor is probably not designed for a science experiment about the concentration of CO2 in a really tight area. It's more about breathable levels. So up to, I what, think they said 10,000 parts per million uh, in the general air, not in a little confined area like that. Uh, but I could be wrong. Look at the data sheet. There may also be range settings that you can uh, invoke in the library that I haven't looked at. I'm using it in its kind of most basic form. Uh, so let's see. That about sums it up. It's a really cool sensor. Like Lady Ada said, this one is really doing the the proper calculation for CO2. It's not just guessing based on other particulate matter and volatile organic uh, gases in the air. This one is, uh, is straight up CO2 sensing. So that is it. That is my product pick of the week. I'm going to go ahead and take that uh, off of there like so. Pull this out. That connector is really in there. I'm going to do the bad thing and pull it by the wires. There we go. Uh, so let's finish this up. Uh, before I leave, I'll remind you, head on over to the product page just during this broadcast, and you're going to get a 40% off. So it's down to $35 from normally $58.95. Uh, it's down to $35.37 to be precise. 40% off. You can get a maximum of 10 of them. And this discount uh, is available just during this live stream. So it's going to disappear after this. If you're thinking of getting one, go ahead and get it. I think there's a short grace period once you get it in your cart for you to place your order, but don't dally. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested in doing some CO2 sensing, then this is probably the board for you. So that is my product pick of the week. It is the SCD30 CO2 sensor. And I'm going to go ahead and place that on my STEMI QT board of goodness. I don't have a specialized hanger, so it's going to dangle a bit right there. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park. This has been JP's product pick of the week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.